Hi, this is Crystal. I'm back. This lesson focuses on building tables and relationships in Microsoft Access. Data structure is the most important part to get right. Thanks to JD Live, who is Jerome Dixon from Houston, for the wonderful original music in this lesson. For more great tutorials, visit our sponsor, everythingaccess.com. In the last lesson, we created three tables, contacts, phones, and addresses. And we defined relationships going from contacts to addresses with referential integrity. And we defined another relationship going from contacts to phones with referential integrity. It's time to put some data in. I will open the contacts table and I'll put my last name in. Actually, you know, instead of name one, I think I'm going to make a few changes on the field names. While you're designing tables, as you think of better names, change them. So instead of name one for the main name, I'm just going to call it main name. And then for the first name, I'll call that name A, and middle name, I'll call name B. And I've also decided to use CTC as my three-character abbreviation for contact. So I will just edit the name of the note field as well. Save the table, and go to the datasheet view. I haven't created my category table yet, so main name is long, first name, middle name, which I'll skip for myself, contact title. Now just like, oh, contact title isn't long enough to put in trainer and programmer. I need to change the size of this field. Right click on the tab, choose Design View from the shortcut menu, and Contact Title. I think I will make 50. Some titles can get quite long. Save. Go back to the Data Sheet View. Suffix would be something like Junior or Senior. Nickname. Strive for peace, and I'm human, gender is female, and I'll just put in the month of my date of birth. Now this is why I separated the date of birth into three fields, because sometimes you just know part of the date of someone's birthday. You might just know, oh hey, their birthday is in December or you might know the year, or you might know the month and the day, and not the year. Normally I do store a date as a date field. Let me just look at the design view of this. See, one of the choices for the data type is date time, and date and time are stored together since both mark the passing of a day. But I didn't make this a date field for the simple fact that I don't necessarily know all the information. Another thing I like to do when I'm looking at a data sheet view is I don't like this last column showing. So what I have done is I have customized my quick access toolbar to put the hide column button on. So I can just click there and that column hides. Now, if I open another table, because I'm in tab view, I can only look at one thing at a time. Now, what I like to do is go into overlapping windows view, so I can look at more than one window at a time. So, File, Options, Current Database, choose overlapping windows, so click OK. 
Now, in order to actually make the change, the database has to be closed and opened again. So under the File menu, I'll choose Close Database, and I'll then under File, I'll go to Recent, grab the last thing I had, and now I'm in Overlapping Windows, so I can open more than one table at a time. And I'll just size these a little better. I'll put contacts on top since contacts have to come first. Here's addresses and then the table for phone numbers. Now my contact ID is 1. So if I want to put an address in for myself, I need to put the contact ID here so this address can be related to somebody. And I'll put an address in. And same thing with phones. If I want to put a phone number in, I need to relate it to the contact. So I'll fill out the contact ID. Now I just typed the numbers in for the phone number. It's nice to put an input mask on a phone number so that the symbols get entered automatically. I'll click away from the record, right click on the title bar of the phone window, go to the design view, make this a little taller for a minute, on the phone field, click on input mask, click on the builder button, and choose phone number, go to the next dialog box, the placeholder of an underscore is fine, go to the next, I always like to store with the symbols. That way, when you export to another application, it looks like a phone number, not just a number. Go to the next dialog box and now finish. So now I go back to the data sheet view, save the table, and the phone number that I put in now has the symbols. And just like I did with the other table, I'm going to click in the Click to Add column and hide it. I'll do the same thing for the Addresses table, hide that. Now notice when I make a change, there's a pencil in the Record Selector area. This means there are changes to that record that have not been written to the disk. Another field name change that I'm going to make is changing C title to just title. So I'll go to the design view of this table, make the window a little taller while I'm in the design view, and I'll just take the C off of title. And if I want to use title in another table, then I would just change the name there. Look through the rest of the fields. Now I like to put tracking fields in. And one of the tracking fields that I add is called DTM add, which is a date time, and this is the date time the record was added. This is a very easy field to add. You can just set the default value equals now, open close parenthesis, look at the data sheet view of this information, and let's see how this is going to affect things. Let me create another record. last name, first name, and Joe is a plumber, he's human, he's a male, and let's say that I do know his birthday, it's uh, 1982, January 1st, he was a New Year's baby. And now notice that the date added, let me resize this so we can see the time as well, is automatically filled in. This is very, very nice as you're creating records to know exactly when it was added. So I will go to the design view and I'm going to put another tracking field in. I'll copy 
this, and I'm just clicking in the selector box and pressing Control C. You can also right click here, choose copy. And now I will paste that. I'm going to make a slight change though. This is the date it was edited. Here again, I'm going to start out with the default value of now. Now this edited field is going to have to be manually updated. When we design forms to put data in, we will update this field. Now I'm going to copy these tracking fields to each of my tables. Select them both. Press Control C to copy. Now let me go to the design view of phones. Paste the copied fields. Save and close. I'll go to the design view of addresses. Come to the bottom and paste the tracking fields in here as well. When I open the contacts table, I see a little plus sign, and if I click on it, it will let me associate another table. For instance, let's say I wanted to associate the addresses table. I could click OK. And while this might seem like a really handy thing to do, data should not be put in directly to the tables. Now while you're developing, if you want to leave the subdata sheet on so that it's easier to create sample data, that's fine. But sometime before you define forms and reports, you should not you should turn off the subdata sheet. So I'm going to go into the table design and turn on the properties. So I'll show the property sheet. And on the subdata sheet name, notice that I associated it with the addresses table, but here I'm going to pick none. And I'll save this and close it. Now when I open the contacts table, the little plus sign is gone. And let me set it to none for both of the other tables as well. Instead of auto, I'll set it to none for phones. Save it and close it. Do the same thing for addresses. Instead of auto, set it to none. Save and close. Under options, we want to turn off autocorrect. So on current database, first we have to Uncheck Perform Name Autocorrect, click OK, Compact Repair the Database, then go back to Options, and on Current Database, go back down, uncheck Track Name Autocorrect, click OK, Compact and Repair. Now the subdata sheet changes that we made will stick. Having autocorrect on can cause issues. It's a good idea to turn it off and just make all the corrections yourself. It's time to create some more tables. Looking at our relationship diagram, and I just resize these since I added tracking fields, I see that in my contacts table I have a place to put the category in, but I haven't created a category table yet. I'll just copy the phones table, right click, choose copy, right click in the navigation pane, choose paste, and the name of this will be categories. Oh, actually, I think I'll do the singular. When I don't use a prefix, in this case I'm using C underscore, I'll use a plural form of the name for the table, but in this case, when I see with contacts, I did an S, and the other ones I didn't. I'll probably rename the contacts table to take the S away. So I just want structure, and click OK, and here's the category table. 
Now, uh, first thing, I'm going to take the S off of contact. So just right clicked on that, choose rename. And then on the category table, right click, go to the design view. The primary key is cat ID. I'll press F2 to select the whole field. Control C to copy, tab, tab, paste that into the description. For the category, the next thing I want is, I don't need that, uh, don't need a contact ID, and I will just have a category, and that'll be text. Now you have to be careful when you're copying a table. See, I have an input mask here, which I don't want for category. Uh, field size, I'll bump up to 50 don't need these two fields, so I'll just delete them. So there's the category table. Save it and close it. Now, as you're designing tables, put them on your relationship diagram. The relationship diagram is so much easier to work with when you build it as you go. So I'll resize these. Cat ID, drag from the primary key in the main table to the foreign key in the related table and let go. Make sure that the fields listed up here are the same, and I see I didn't let go of it on the right field. I must have let go of it on CID instead of CAD ID, so I'll cancel this. It's very important to let go on the same field. So now I let go on CAD ID, going from CAD ID to CAD ID, and then what else do I need to check in this dialog box? Enforce referential integrity. This will ensure that I don't have any CAD IDs in the context table that don't exist in the category table. I also want to create a table for email addresses. So once again, I'll just start out with one of the other tables. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. This will be C underscore E address, and just want structure. I'll modify this, and the primary key will be E A D R I D. F2 to highlight it, Control C to copy, Tab Tab paste. The type ID will be for the email address. And I'll just use EAD, and primary is still a good choice. Other options might be work, personal. I'm still going to be linking to a contact, but here instead of phone, I will have the email address. And that'll be a text field. Once again, don't forget to edit this bottom section. 100 is long enough for an email address. Don't need those other two fields. So save this and close it. Put it on the relationship diagram. Just drag it from the navigation pane. Let go. Resize. Drag a relationship from CID in the main table to CID on the related table and let go. Enforce Referential Integrity will create the relationship. Another contact table that I would like to have is something to keep track of websites. So I'll just copy the e-address table. C underscore web, structure only, modify, this will be web ID copy, paste to the description, type ID web, primary, I like to have primary as a choice for everything, and so types of web pages might be personal, blog, news, whatever categories you want to create, Again, we're going to need a link to the contacts table so we know who it is that this web address belongs to. Down here, we'll have a place for the URL. 
that'll be text and we'll let that be 255 as long as it can go. We might want to have a couple more fields. Now I could add fields down here, one for like a web page title. Now I used title in my contacts table. So here, if I want to use title again, I should give it a different name because a web page title is not the same thing as a contacts title. And every field in the database should have a unique name. So I will call this W title. It'll be a text field. And we'll let this also be 100. Let me move this up. I'll just move it below the URL. Now, another way that we can insert a field is just to right click somewhere and choose Insert Rows. Another field I want to insert is a web page description. So I might use description in another table, and DESC all by itself is a reserve word, so wouldn't want to use that by itself. Anyway, text field. web page description, and then, oh, another thing I might want is a note field. And I use note when I'm just going to leave this field size at 50. If I was going to make it 255, I would call it notes. That's just my own little convention for field naming. I'm going to copy this web note field because I don't think I put it in all the tables. For instance, eAddress doesn't have a note field. Let me go to the table design, paste this down here, and this will be an email address note. Move this up. I like the tracking fields to be last. So I'll save this and close it. Phones table has a note. Address has a note. Contact has a note. And yeah, I suppose I should put a note in the category table also. And I'll move that up. Save and close. Now I don't have all the tables on this diagram. What am I missing? Uh, web page. So let me move that over, size the field list. Go from CID in the contacts table to CID in the web table, let go, check enforce referential integrity, and create. Another field that I have in each of these tables that I need to create a table for is every single one of my related tables has some sort of a type. Address, phone, email address, and web. Let me create the first one. Create. Table design. I'll start this one from scratch. And this will be type ID, it'll be an auto number, type is a text field, and we'll let it just be 50. The reason I didn't make TYPE as the field name is because TYPE is a reserved word. Now I need my tracking fields. I could type them in here or I can go get them from another table. I'll just right click on one of these field lists, choose table design, come down here, copy these tracking fields. I just pressed control C and I have a windows on my QAT. So I'll drop that down, go back to table one, paste the tracking fields, I've forgotten to set the primary key. Let's see what happens if I try and save this table. Now I'll put my, so I say OK. Access says there's no primary key defined. 
and there is an auto number field. So if I say yes, it'll choose that auto number field for the primary key. And when I look at the indexes window, I see the primary key is set on type ID. Now this is just a generic types table. I really need one of these for each of my related tables. So let me close this and on types, I'm going to copy and paste it. First I'll do address types. And just structure. Actually, I think I'll rename that to be with that ADR in the beginning. And I'll call it types here. And I'll drag it to the diagram. And I'll use the same field name for the primary key as I did in this addresses table. So I'll just put an ADR on the end of each of these. ADR, ADR, type of address, and save it and take a look at it. And once again, I'm going to get rid of this click to add column. I like primary to always be zero, but when I start creating choices in here, Notice that the auto number starts with one. So how do we get an auto number of zero? Well, let me show you. I can create query design. I'll just close this. I'll drag the address types over. Now I really don't need this table. Well, in fact, I'm going to end up getting rid of it but I'm just going to put these two fields on the grid, change this query to an append query. And what do I want to append to? I want to append to address types because I'm going to add something for primary, oops, primary to the type address. Notice that access doesn't know what to call this calculated field, so it calls it expression one, which doesn't matter in this case. But now I want a zero, and now I don't need this field list anymore. The only reason I put it on there is just to make it easy to pick what I want to append. I run this, says I'm about to add one row. I say yes, and now if I look at the address types again, I see that I have a primary now is zero. I'm going to do this same thing. Well, actually, now that this has records, I could just copy from this address types table. I guess I'll get rid of this one. And I won't need this query anymore, and I don't need to save it, so I'll just close it. And I'll copy address types to... EAD types, email address types. Oh, ah, here I want the structure and the data. And let me open this up. And work is still a good choice for an email address. Another choice I might want is personal. I'll close this table. Uh, another thing I want is uh, phone types. So I'll just copy the email address types because that has personal in it as well. Uh, control C, Control V. This is phone types. I'll get structure and data. Open it up. That still is pretty good. Another type of phone I might want is fax, mobile, or cell could have a pager. Notice that as I type, there's a pencil in the record selector box until I click away from the record. The pencil means there's a change that hasn't been saved to disk. As soon as you click away from the record, the record is saved. 
This is unlike the other Microsoft Office products where you specifically have to save. Access automatically saves. Stopping it from saving is the tricky part. So I'll close the phone types table now and I'll copy the email address types to create the web types table. Open up the web types table, add a few more entries, maybe blog, another type. You, you might have a, a URL that you have in there for pricing. And these categories can be anything you want. I will close the web types table and we have some more stuff to add to the diagram. To make space, I can double click one of the ribbon tabs and collapse the ribbon. And I'll also double click the relationships title bar to maximize that within the access window. Give myself a little more space to put each of these types tables in. So address types we already have need to make a relationship and enforce referential integrity. I don't like this to happen where the lines cross. So I'm going to rearrange the field list so that CID is above the type ID. Right click, go to table design, click in the selector box for CID, let go, click again, drag it up, close it, save it, and now those lines don't cross. I think I'm going to have to do the same for each of these others. Now let me go ahead and bring on the phone types, resize, bring on the email address types. Oops, wrong one. And bring on the web types. Do a little more rearranging. Sometimes what I'll do is this, just to give a little more space. I want category to be to the left of contacts, but it doesn't necessarily have to be all the way to the left. Need to drag relationships, phone types. Oh, and I see I forgot to change the name of that field. Type ID phone, type of phone, save and close, drag a relationship, rearrange the fields in the phone table so that CID is above the type field. That way the lines don't cross on the relationship diagram. Drag a relationship. Now here again I have to rename this field, but I'll, first I'll just go ahead and create this relationship. Then on the email address types, type ID email address, and I guess I should copy that whole thing over here now. Rearrange the fields in the email address table so that CID is above the type field so that our lines don't cross on the relationship diagram. Web types, we have to change the name of this to web. Save and close, drag the relationship, enforce referential integrity, we'll rearrange. Well, I guess in this case, we could put the types 
table up here, and now we don't have to rearrange the field list in the web table to not have those lines cross. There are a few fields that need to be renamed in the phone types table and in the email address types table. My main tables are created. The relationships diagram is laid out so that it flows as data must be entered. By looking at this diagram, I can see what the database is tracking and how the tables are related. Oh, that looks pretty good. Next time, we'll build some forms. Thanks to Wayne Phillips from Everything Access for sponsoring these lessons. To Jerome Dixon and others for sharing their music. To Microsoft for making such an outstanding product as Access. And you for watching and learning. If you would like me to come to your location and teach Access using your business information, or you want to connect to me so we can build your database together, send me email. Follow the links in the video description to learn more. In the next lesson, we will build forms to enter information. Through sharing, we will all get better.